Hello, dear friends. Uh, I'm Irina, as you know, and probably somebody don't know <laughs> know me. Thank you for following my page. Uh, here every week uh, I talk about uh, key Ukrainian history. <laughs> I'm a historian, but I finished university about 11 years ago. So I decided to renew my knowledge. I decided to structure it and find find something new. That is why I um, learned this material and uh, share with you. Uh, today our topic is about Kiev Rus, the great state, medieval state of Ukraine, Russia, Belarus. <laughs> Slavic countries. Um, I found out that uh, last time we got more and more really clever and young historians who can explain history in a very easy way. Um, they have uh, really true knowledge. So one of them is um, uh, this uh, this man, <laughs> who is the teacher of uh, uh, history in uh, Shevchenko University, uh, and uh, next one is uh, uh, Pan Artem Artemi from Kiev Mogil Academy University, where I studied uh, history. And uh, these two men, they are specialists in Slavic uh, history and also in Kiev Rus history. For example, Arseni, Arseni uh, he tell about uh, Slavic, about Vikings, about their uh, relation between each other and how it's happened that we got the big uh, medieval state in the uh, 10th century. Uh, but first of all, I would like to show you this map. I don't know if you can see it's clear. This is a map of the north of Europe. You can see here Baltic, uh, uh, Baltic Sea, uh, north of Russia, uh, here Sweden, uh, Finland, and Russia, here Black Sea and Ukraine. <laughs> In that time, in the 8th, 6th, 8th, 9th century, uh, the big uh, power in uh, Europe had uh, Vikings, Normans, who came from the north and just <laughs> ruin, <laughs> tried to ruin as many uh, barbarians this uh, Roman wall. Uh, so first of all they came to western europe but after they decided also visit, visited eastern europe because right here across modern russia to the east there was the big um, road from uh, viking to the arabian countries arabian countries were very rich and they had um, silver coins uh, Vikings um, provide Arabians with uh, military equipment, uh, with guns, uh, with, with swords, <laughs> yeah. and instead we, they got silver, gold uh, from them. Vikings, they make like um, military base. Its ba this base was uh, here. Uh, here is Ladoha, this is north of Russia. Here was uh, is Ladoha Lake. And nearby Ladoha is uh, the town called Old Ladoha <laughs> in Russia. This is not far from St. Petersburg. I think about three hours from St. Petersburg. So uh, in that time Ladoha was a settlement of Vikings. They settled there, they communicated with local Slavic people. Actually in that time there lived the Slavic people who moved they are from the west, from the area of modern Poland. They're, they were Western, Western Slavic people. Hello, 
Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day as well. <laughs> so Vikings decided to excavate a new, develop new road from the north to the Black Sea to Byzantine to Byzantium to Arabian country. That is why they uh, decided to explore Dnieper River, this um, uh, way through the Russia, Belarusia, and uh, through the modern Ukraine. Uh, one of the main, yeah, one of the main center, that's where they stopped, was Kiev. That is why Kiev became so important in that time. It stayed on the trade roads, uh, so Vikings uh, have a very good position here. And by the way, if we tell about Russian history, Russian people, uh, they are very proud of uh, so-called Rurik. Rurik was like uh, the first uh, Rus king, Rus king, yeah. <laughs> they uh, learn, uh, Russian people learn about him in school, in school, Russian people, and they were proud. But this Rurik, Rurik, uh, he was Viking, uh, he also came from the north, <laughs> he just organized uh, all, Sla all Slavic people here, he, they co cooperated um, around him, so he created some kind, not state, but some kind of relation with the local people. This uh, man, Rurik, some gorgeous man with sword, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this monument you can see. I think this is from Russia, from Moscow. Uh, so that is why they were very, very proud of him. So uh, this uh, uh, king, Rurik, he had a son, a little son. His name was Igor. And uh, when Rurik was close to death, he was old, he asked uh, his relative Oleg to take care about his son. Uh, so uh, Igor, together with Oleg, they move from Ladoga to Kiev. In that time in Kiev, uh, a ruler in Kiev was uh, another Viking prince. Uh, his name was Askol. Actually, there were probably two brothers, uh, two um, princes, uh, Askol and Dir. Uh, they were Vikings, uh, but uh, some uh, uh, Ukrainian consider them as Slavs. But I think they were Vikings because uh, their names are Vikings, Scandinavians. Uh, sometimes they uh, attacked, at, uh, make attack to Constantinople. It was uh, okay for for that time. Uh, and when they came back from uh, their military campaign in uh, Constantinople, to Constantinople, they come back to Kiev. Igor, if, together with Oleg, uh, two Viking princes, <laughs> Rurik <laughs> inhabitants, uh, they came to Kiev and they um, seized a power in Kiev and killed the uh, Ascolt. And here you can see so um, a very famous uh, place in Kiev called Askol Grave. According to the legend, Oleg um, killed Askol and he buried him here in this place uh, called Askol Dova Mohila. Actually, here no no his grave. In this time, here you can see church, and nearby, by the way, you can see modern burial. A burial place. Uh, one of the men who was uh, buried he there is uh, the modern <laughs> Ukrainian American militarist. Uh, his name is uh, Marko Paslavsky. He is, uh, I think, he's American, uh, you, uh, from U.S. or from Canada. He was military there for a long time, but in uh, 2014, when uh, the war happened uh, between Ukraine and Russia, he came uh, came to Ukraine and he served in army. Uh, but uh, there was the great battle, the big battle. I think it's happened uh, in the end of summer 2014 
here and uh, together with many many Ukrainians many Ukrainians died there are thousands of them uh, he and many Ukrainians were captured by Russia taken the circle and he died and that is why his grave were uh, people make in the center of Kiev on this place Askoldova Mohila because uh, we are really proud that he left the uh, US and came to Ukraine and he protect Ukraine against against Russia so such such a story about him this is uh, the map of uh, so-called Kiev Rus Kiev Rus <laughs> For a long time, uh, Ukrainian uh, Soviet historians thought that Rus, uh, this is local um, name, probably it was a uh, local tribe, Ukrainians here. Yeah. Uh, we have some river called Rus, and they thought probably Rus came from the river. But now we have another version, this historian, young historian that I told you about, I show you they have uh, some viking version they think uh, that's uh, rus russi uh, translate from the scandinavian language as pedal pedal the special equipment for boat yeah uh, and uh, russi it was uh, some kind of the viking tribe uh, that's moved from uh, scandinavia to here <laughs> So, uh, from the 10th century, um, uh, Byzantine historian called this uh, area Rus, Rusi. And um, uh, probably this Rusi Vikings uh, moved to Kiev, such Vikings as Olaf, as Igor, yes, and they established here dynasty, Kiev dynasty. Uh, we don't know if it's true or not because every time have different version but now historian collaborated with uh, archaeologists and try to develop some kind of the version so probably it's true mm. <clears throat> uh, how um, how normans uh, scandinavian people and local people deal with each other for us uh, we don't think that it was like state uh, that vikings came here to organize state actually vikings just uh, need uh, a good tra ro trade road so they need local people who support them who uh, will not attack them during their trip so they did agreement with, um, with Slavic people, uh, they organized the, these people, probably they dominated uh, below uh, Slavic people and in such way they make some kind of organization, uh, probably some Slavic people were military say, served for Scandinavian, probably and uh, they uh, make some uh, agricultural here or different different work yeah but nevertheless uh, scandinavians uh, scandinavians organize uh, local local people slowly slowly uh, vikings were assimilated by these local people because uh, vikings were not many uh, it was the small group of people yeah um uh, Prince Oleg and Prince Igor, this is, uh, they were one of the first um, Kiev princes, uh, princesses, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, they, first, they try to be um, polite to the local people, but uh, further and further they became more strict. And for example, we knew uh, the story when Prince Oleg and his wife Olga made some military campaign against uh, local people uh, for instance uh, in the area of modern uh, north of ukraine in Zhytomyr region there was a separate uh, tribe called drevliani um, and there was a iskorestan town they have a special center iskorestan and probably they wanted to be independent or I don't know but Oleg tried to 
Kunkwa then but during this campaign he was killed by these people that is why Olga came his wife came to them uh, and burned down all their settlements and this event uh, is uh, um, is real because archaeologists found there a uh, burn town at that time uh, so we think that the uh, Kiev princess became yeah, like supreme ruler and slowly they uh, tried to convert, convert more and more, more area, more Slavic people. For us, uh, these tribes were on the area of Ukraine after uh, they conquered also Slavic uh, tribes that um, occupied uh, modern Belarusia, Russia to the north. So in such a way you can see here the big uh, um, state from the Black Baltic Sea to the Black Sea called Kiev Rus. <laughs> Actually in that time it's called Rus, just Rus, not, not Kiev. But uh, <laughs> As I told, first it was just trade um, union. Just in the late 10th century, it became like a uh, like stage. Uh, Kiev princess laid the foundation of the stage, and one of the first serious princes was Prince uh, Vladimir, Vladimir the Great. Vladimir the Great. You can see also him on Ukrainian coin, on Ukrainian money. He decided not only conquered people, uh, not only um, uh, spread his state, make it bigger, but he also take care about development. So that is why, first of all, he decided to build a fortification which, um, around Kiev. Uh, for example, uh, 50 kilometers from Kiev on the, uh, on the uh, south, we have a town Vasilkiv, yeah, and this town was found by Vladimir as fortification, so he makes some kind of fortification around. Uh, because from the south, uh, Kiev Rus was attacked by tribes, uh, wild tribes from the east, uh, like Mongolians and different. And the second that Vladimir made, uh, it was an adop um, um, adaptation Christianity from Byzantine. He decided to be Christian because uh, he needed to collaborate with uh, European king and uh, he need to make some agreement with them. Uh, European kings, they didn't, they were Christian and they um, don't want to make something with a um, pagans, pagans king, yeah, with, with pagans ruler. So he need to be Christian, first of all. And you can see how he baptized, how priest baptized Kiev Rus in that time. It was very difficult because people were against this. You can see my um, previous video about Slavic re religion. Um, third, that he did, he, uh, he seized the other Slavic town in Russia, in Belarus, and he lived there as a ruler his son. In such way he made administration not only in Kiev, but he mm. have uh, administra administration has his spread his power around different tribes, different tri uh, tribes. It was the big area you can imagine from, for example, from Petersburg to Kiev, <laughs> to the Black Sea, no, to, to Kiev, I think, because Black Sea, it was, uh, uh, there were wild tribes. Uh, so, what about Vikings? Um, slowly, Vikings uh, became more like warrior. Kiev uh, Rus princes they started to consider themselves as local. They started to consider themselves as Slavs, and. She, um, if uh, Prince Olga Igor Oleg had uh, Scandinavian name, uh, he, um, uh, Igor's son had uh, name uh, Slavic uh, name uh, Sviatoslav. Sviatoslav. This is uh, Sviatoslav, Yaroslav, Vladimir. This is uh, Slavic names. Uh, 
we call the Vikings Varyahe, Varyahe, and we think that they just served as a militaries for Kievan princes. Uh, the Kievan princes paid them for their and their um, servant. Uh, by the way, if you come to Ukraine in Laura Monastery, you can find a very nice small museum called the Museum of Historical Treasures, uh, Museum of Gold, uh, and there are uh, equipment of the Viking warrior who live uh, in the 10th century his uh, bureau was found near the Golden Gate in Kiev, so it's really very interesting to see this equipment. <laughs> this is my bird, <laughs> she's singing here. So slowly Vikings were um, like um, hiding, they are lost uh, here and uh, uh, Kiev Rus became more and more powerful. It was like collaboration for us. It was collaboration uh, North people and Slavic and slowly it uh, became like more like Slavic Slavic state uh, in uh, It's uh, existed till the uh, Beginning of the 13th century because in the beginning of the 13th century in the 1214 it was conquered by Mongolians and it was ruins <laughs> But um, this is uh, the next topic. Uh, in the next topic, I would like to tell you about Ukrainians, how where we came from, and uh, how we became Ukrainians, how we became we knew about uh, that we are Ukrainians. I think the Ukrainian coat of arms comes from the um, Anurik dynasty. Actually, yes, in that time, uh, all equipments, uh, all equipments came from the, or the big amount of equipments came from the Vikings, because the Vikings, they uh, sell their military stuff to here. And as I now start from the 14th century, uh, more and more popular became uh, military equipment from uh, Euro Europe, from Western Europe, because uh, from the 14th century, part of Ukraine belonged to Poland. Uh, so we got uh, more like Western uh, European costume. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, I wish you have a nice uh, day. By the way, we have snow. And yesterday there are so many kids, they were playing. Uh, actually, it's not very uh, cold, <laughs> just snowing weather. It's really, really great because last uh, winter um, week we had no snow there. Garbage truck. <laughs> okay, thank you guys uh, and see you soon.